Victory in mind. Victory in mind. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Praise God again this morning, saints. Hallelujah. I'm so honored and privileged to stand before you one more time. Amen. To bring a message today which comes from St. Matthew chapter number 15 verses 21 through 28 according to the King James Virgin. And I begin reading at verse number 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold a woman of, of, of Cana came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, True, Lord, yet dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And I want to speak this morning on a subject, a question really. And that is, how great is your faith? How great is your faith? Amen. We see here Jesus. He gets away from the crowd. He, 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 he take, gets a break from the questioning and, and the scheming of the religious leaders. Jesus withdrew from Israel and went north. Went into the north region of Tyre and, and, and Sidon. The Gentile coast, the region of Phoenicia. And Tyre was 35 miles from Galilee and Sidon was 60. There he met a Canaanite woman. Centuries earlier, that area's inhabitants were called Canaanites, according to Numbers 13 and 29. She pleaded with him to have mercy on her demon-possessed daughter. She addressed him as Lord, son of David, a messianic title. But even that appeal could not help her, for the timing was not appropriate. And when Jesus failed to answer her, she persisted with her appeal. The disciples asked Jesus to send her away. They seemed to be asking, Lord, why don't you go ahead and help this woman? See, she isn't going away unless you do so. Jesus reminded them, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. He came to offer his own people the kingdom promised through David centuries before. Thus, it was inappropriate for him to bring blessings on Gentiles before Blessings fell on Israel. Uh, according to Paul in Romans 1 and 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, to the Jew first. Amen. Then he continued unsaid to everyone who believes. But this woman was not easily 
discouraged. She saw in Jesus her only chance for help for her child. On her knees she pleaded, Lord, help me. Jesus' reply caused her to realize her position. For he said it was not right to take the children's bread and cast it to their dogs. He was picturing a family gathering at mealtime around a table, eating food prepared by the head of the household. The Gentile woman saw herself in this picture. She was not a child in the family of Israel, eligible for a seat at the table. But she saw herself as a household dog, a Gentile. The Jews often call Gentiles dogs, eligible to receive crumbs that might fall from the master's table. But this lady was concentrating on her problem. She came to Jesus with a problem that we all have in common today. And that is the devil, Satan himself. He may not attack all of us the same way, but we are all under attack by him. She was truly dealing with the devil. She says it in the scripture. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And we, when we think about it, we are all in the theme together. We need all the spiritual strength we can get to deal with this guy. He's a handful. Satan, he's bad news. John called him in Revelations 12 and 10, the accuser or the brethren. Peter called him an adversary in 1 Peter 5 and 8. John called him again in Revelation 9 and 11. He, he's called the angel of the bottomless pit. Matthew called him Beelzebub, the enemy, in Matthew 12 and 24. Paul called him Belial in 2 Corinthians 6 and 15. Isaiah called him the crooked serpent in Isaiah 27 and 1. John called him a robber, a thief, a killer, a murderer. I'll tell you something, he's really something to deal with. That's why the first thing I do in the morning when I awake is to pray. Amen. I don't want to get up and have to go, try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil. I look to Jesus because I need his strength to deal with was Satan himself. So this woman, she was not a member of the religious community. She was not a Jew. She was a Canaanite, a dog, according to the Jews. Somebody not worthy of salvation. She had come to realize that she was no might for the devil in her own strength. She was not welcome in the religious services. She couldn't go to church. The Jews call her a dog. But if you know anything about dogs, which I happen to know my father used to own a few, anyway, some dogs know how to hunt. A dog can pick up a scent of the prey from the ground or from the air, and they would track it down until he get to the right tree. So somewhere in this latest battle with life, with the struggles of life, and the problems she had, she got wind of a miracle worker named Jesus. In other words, she began to do a little research. She began to hunt, in other words. She got nosy. She asked some questions. She listened to testimony. And she began to do a little research. She looked in the Old Testament. 
And she found out about a promised Messiah, a deliverer who will come down through the lineage of David. That put her on the right trail. Her search gave her hope that the promise was being fulfilled in a man named Jesus. And I'm reminded of here of Romans again, 1.16, where it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. In this lady position, in the gospel, she's referred to as a dog. And so she's really saying, I'm not ashamed. She was not ashamed to be called a dog because she knew the power of Christ. For it is the power unto salvation to everyone that believes. And I'm sure that's the phrase that she paid close attention to. It went on to say to the Jew first and also to the Greeks which means the dogs. The more she learned, the more her hope turned to faith that he could help her. And one day she picked up in the wind that Jesus was in her town. So she set out to find him. And when she did, she didn't get cute and get all sophisticated. She got right to the point. The scriptures say she cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Lord, help me, thou son of David. Now, Son of David means that Jesus is the promised Messiah, which means he had to come through the lineage of David. She said, my daughter, my own flesh and blood, whom I love, is possessed with the devil. And I'm sure she promised I can't deal with it. She realized I can't deal with it by myself. This thing is wearing me out. Lord, help me, which only you can. Hallelujah. But the scriptures say in verse 23 that Jesus answered her not a word. Maybe he was amazed at her knowledge of him because she really had her act together. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. Notice here, she never called one disciple by name. So disciple, disciple need to stop lying. She was not crying after a deal. The Bible says she was crying after Jesus. And but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. Maybe he addressed her in such a way as to show or teach the apostles something. Amen. Jesus goes now into a parable mode, something that even his own disciples had trouble understanding. Look at the parable in Luke chapter 8, verses 9 through 10. And it said, his, his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not hear. But he knew this Canaanite woman, she had, this dog had no problem with a parable. She knew exactly what Jesus meant. Her spiritual understanding was superior. She understood that she was not a lost Israelite. She's seeking Jesus because he was not sent to seek her. But she is seeking him because she knows that he can help her. 
John 1 and 11 said he came unto his own and his own received him not. Verse 25 says, Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Look at the word worship. Who taught her how to worship him? Paul had not yet preached to the Gentiles. This lady had never been to church, never even been to Sunday school. But she worshipped Jesus. She knew how to worship. But he also then said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Maybe Jesus was still marveling over her spiritual knowledge. He used the word dog that the Jews called her. But this is one dog who would not be thrown off by name calling. Amen. Obviously, <laughs> she was not a sister. Amen. Let me tell you something. If any Jew called a sister or a dog, it's own. Amen. But she stayed on point because she knew she was barking up the right tree. She said, Lord, I know that's true. Verse 27. And she said, true, Lord. I know something about dogs. Yet the dogs eat up the crumbs which fall from the master's table. She recognized there was power in a little crumb that fall from the master's table. So she said, I'm not asking for a seat at the table. I don't need a plate set before me. Let Israel have her place. Set the course meal before them. Just let me get close enough to the table that a little crumb might fall my way. Because on the master's table, two small fish and five loaves of bread can feed over 5,000 men, not counting women and children. A little mustard seed on the master's table can move Mountains. Surely a little crumb is enough for me. Let the Jews call me a dog. I don't mind as long as I remind, re, re, remain around the table that a little crumb might fall on me. Jesus answered her and said, O oh woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee as thy will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Not next week, not next Friday, but that very hour she was made whole. Amen. Think about a little crumb. A crumb on my table might feed an ant. But a crumb on the master's table can feed a giant. Let the crumb, amen, of peace fall from the table. Let the crumb of love, a little love, fall from the table. Let healing fall from the table. Let a little joy fall from the table. Because there's power in the crumbs on the master's table. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, Paul says, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. O oh, woman, Great is their faith. Faith come by hearing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. By it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed through the word of God 
so that things which are seen were not made from things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his witness, of his guilt, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God has translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. The scriptures say, he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Through faith, Noah was shown seeing not seen as yet, Move with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was told to go unto a place which he should afterward receive as an inheritance, obeyed and he went out, not knowing whether he went. He sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city that had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith, Sarah herself, not the maid, not her God, but the scriptures say Sarah herself, received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful that promise. Hallelujah. I better get away from this. Thank God. When you ask God for a favor today, when you ask him to heal your body, can Jesus say to you like he said to this, that woman, can he say great is your faith? Amen. When you get down on your knees and ask God to heal your child, can he say great is your faith. When you want God to bring your dreams to reality, can he say great is your faith? How great is your faith? Is it great enough to move a mountain? Hallelujah. We need to have great faith when we go to God and expect him to give us our blessings. We, we, if you got a pink slip in one hand, eviction notice in the other, and you cry out to God, how great is your faith? Is it unto salvation? To whosoever who believeth. How great is your faith this morning? I leave you with that. We all need Jesus. But when we call on him, when we pray, how great is our faith? Faith can move mountains. Faith can move heaven. Faith can move God. Faith can open up the windows and cause a blessing to be poured out on you that you won't even have room to receive. We need to learn to just stop asking and just like like a days ago asking a rye at the Bible saying we need to learn hallelujah to have great faith when we want God to move on our behalf. Thank God. How great is your faith today? And I leave you and let you chew on that, ponder on that for a little while. How great is your faith? Amen. Joy, 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 joy,